So looking at that, a couple other things that we want to look at here before we get to what we call bridge. And bridge gives us the functionality of streamlining the process. So rather than having to take quantities and manually move them to our estimating system to be costed out, we can just click a button and boom, it's going to send those over. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves here and uh, take a look at some other functionality that we can do here. And the key thing is, is, is when you look at this, of course, we're going to have addendums, we're going to have change orders, we're going to have all of those things that happen that will change this particular drawing, whatever it may be. In this case, what I've done is I've done some takeoff on this drawing, and I really just want to quickly compare the new addendum, the new change order, and align that with this guy right here. What it's going to do is red is new, or should I say red is old, blue is new. Kind of a little rhyme there, but uh, anyway, when you look at this, now I've got that, that takeoff right there that's been done. But the blue is telling me, oh, this is going to be new. I'm going to align this. There's, there's functionality to take it through the alignment. We won't do that during the presentation. But in this case, what we've done is we've taken this countertop, we've extended it out, and we've moved the stovetop uh, diagonally. Well, in this situation, this flooring, whatever it may be, in this in the demonstration, it's concrete, but, you know, anyway, let's say it was flooring at this point. I need to go out, make the changes to this. Very easily done. I'll just go ahead, make that change, move that guy right there, and now we've made that change. Now, let's do one more thing to this and put a description to this. In this instance, I'm going to say room two, but I'm going to say CO. So that's naming convention. So remember that as we get into later on in the presentation here. So sitting there going there, and now we've done that. We've done that takeoff. We've adjusted that to the CO. And we can, of course, put any additional notes out here that we want. One more thing that we will do is we'll go out and do some counting. Now with the system, and I look at the system here as far as a, a capability to auto count, and when you look at electrical designs, of course, I've got a lot of, lot of information, a lot of detail. And by the way, this solution, being able to read the PDFs, I can load about 150 PDF pages in about a minute. Not even that long. It takes 30 seconds. Done. So it's one of those things, reading PDFs, clean, crisp lines that you see there, very easily to find. It's nice stuff. But let's do a quick count on these particular items right out here. Let's name what they're going to be. Pretty easy to do. It's going to be fire and security, and let's say that they're going to be our smoke detectors, which they are. Now, in this instance, what I want to do is I want to search the entire page. So let's go out and find those particular items and search for me. Now, what's nice about the solution is all of that can be done in the background. So we can continue to do our work doing takeoff here. And uh, when it's done, then we can come back and review it. It does it very quickly. It's very easy to do. Well, of course, this guy, that is definitely not what we're looking for. So we can purge the things that we don't need. Let's stretch out the things that we're looking at here and kind of get into the detail of, of what those look like, the surroundings around those particular items right there. As you can tell, or maybe you can tell, is that some of these guys are not like the same ones. They're, well, we got fire detectors. Uh, oh, looks like this is an auxiliary. Here's a heat detector. I can go ahead and I'll mark those and say, let's not count those, but we're going to count those later on. So let's go ahead and count these guys right here. By the way, review on the drawing, make some changes to this. A lot of flexibility that you have right here, but we won't get into that detail during this presentation. So looking at that, we're going to, these are all smoke detectors. Let's count that. Save and continue. Uh, let's see, that's an auxiliary. We'll go ahead and put that guy in there as well. Save and continue. Last but not least, how about that heat detector? I got to tell you, you know, as far as the safety within this particular building right here, I'd feel pretty safe. So pretty well covered as far as the uh, detection of smoke, heat, and everything else that we got going on there. But when we look at that, 
we can even become more efficient than that. And like I said, as we want to grow with the system, we want the, the, the solution to provide us more functionality. Well, in this case right here, what I can do is, well, let's go out and rather than just one drawing at a time, let's go out and search every drawing where that symbol may be applicable. So it could be in this, 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 and this. All of these particular uh, electrical items right there. By the way, if it's already been marked off as counted, the solution is, is uh, uh, the logic is built in so that it won't double count anything, right? So, uh, so if it's already marked off, checked off, it will not double count those particular items for us. So it's going to go out, it's going to do its thing, it's going to look through all of those particular pages for us and find the details, find those particular uh, item symbols that we want to find. By the way, it, it, when you're counting items and you're out there clicking on items, we have a symbol database that you can utilize and make your own as well. So uh, a lot of versatility, flexibility. One more look at this. Now we can see, well, that guy would be purged. But in this instance now, we're finding all those symbols on another page. So count as many pages as you need to looking for that one symbol and then go through the process of uh, marking those off, automatically finding those, and you're good to go. I'll say uh, uh, we don't need to review that later. So now let's jump over and take a look at, here's a page where I've done some takeoff. And in this case, it's going to be, it's going to be concrete. You know, what would be a, a demonstration from Sage if you didn't include concrete? But, but when you look at this here, it, it's going to be concrete, but think of it as flooring or, you know, whatever square footage, sublayering, whatever it may be. But in this case, what we want to do is we want to take advantage of what we call bridge. And what we're, we'll open up the bridge. Say, okay, we'll open, a, open up a bridge. So what you will do is, um, let's get to the right bridge. By the way, we have a perver pervasive and a SQL solution, uh, estimated solution. Uh, I made a change to that. And more to come on, on that as far as what we're doing with SQL. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I've got an estimate that's called La Quinta. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But La Quinta, something to that effect. And when we look at this, now what you're going to be looking at is your database. For those of you that don't know and are not working with our estimating solution, let's kind of define some things here. Is we've got Project Manager. So what we have is an item in our database that has Project Manager. At this point, it doesn't have any what we'll call variables, attributes, specs, so to speak, with it. But in this case, what we want to do is say, my Project Manager is going to be out there for five days or five months, actually. We'll send that over to the estimating. Done. So I've just costed that out. Now think about this. When, when we're looking at the, the items that we've taken off, and by the way, it doesn't have to be quantifiable items. It could be anything in your database that we want to send over into estimating. But when you're looking at this, we're going to be able to cost out all of those items without manually moving data, which really adds some, some complexity and some, some opens us up for some errors as well. But when we look at this, if you're over here, you want to create an item on the fly, do it. Go ahead and create that. Save it to your database for later. Then we look at assemblies. And just to drive home kind of the concept of an assembly here, for, the use, for those of you that may not be using our estimated solution, is here's a list of variables, a list of specifications or attributes that you may answer area, width, height, all of that good stuff, and then making choices along the way as well. Maybe for wire mesh, when we look at that, we may want to see the, the choices that we have coming over from our Sage estimating solution. So looking at that, now there's those variables right there. So now let's, let's go another step. We've got these items over here that we've taken off. Well, let's go ahead and remove that guy or we're going to take off. We've actually taken them off on the plan. Now we're going to take them off to the estimating solution. Drag and drop. And now what you're going to see is this. Is, well, unless you're colorblind, which I've had a couple people go, I don't really see the colors on there. But, but when you look at this, you're seeing coloration of these particular fields. What that is telling us 
is that is mapped to those particular variables where it makes sense, right? So area to area and uh, uh, concrete strength to concrete strength. And I'll tell you, mapping is no harder than doing this. That's what I did. Well, so let's say if this number right here meant to go there, well, yeah, it's got to be a different number because we have the we have minimums and maximums set up for this, so I can't actually put that in there. But let's see if it were this guy. That's how that's how easy it is. It's how easy we can make it. But we know perimeter belongs there, so let's put that over there. One other thing I will kind of highlight here is we are doing some BIM, so when you're getting the, when you're getting, uh, if you're in, uh, let me put it this way, if a conversation of BIM is coming up within your organization and you start to uh, look at 3D World and bringing that in to uh, estimating, we're building that out as we speak and uh, uh, things are happening pretty quickly for us. So uh, we'll see more of that in the future, um, but uh, that's not the focus of what we're doing today. We're doing 2D takeoff. So with this takeoff here, we're generating quantities for all of those items down below. So this is an assembly or depending upon how far back you go. Our, in our DOS days, the dark, dark world, uh, we used to call them work packages, of course. So looking at that, what we can do is we can send this over to our estimate. Let's cost this out. Send it over. So the nice thing about this is this, is we want to give you an audit trail. We want to make sure that you know where you've been and what you've done. So review. What have we sent over there? Now remember what I said about, uh, I'll get to this in a minute, but what we've done is what we've sent over to estimating are these particular items right here. And when we want to see those particular items or hide those particular items, we show them here, but we also want to protect you from duplicating the effort on the plans. So we'll hide them on the plan. So I've already taken that one over there as well. So looking at that, we give you kind of that safety net that says, you get, what do we get? We get calls, we got meetings, we got things we got going on. We get interrupted, you know, 20 times a day. We want to know where we've been and what we've done. So with that being said, now we can say, let's hide the, the ones that we've taken off and let's see the ones that we've sent over to estimating. Makes sense. 